Trust your first impression. What do you see down there? Feels like a desert or mm -hmm. a wasteland. A wasteland. Mm -hmm. Tell me more. It's dry. It's dry and dry. It's dry and arid. Mm -hmm. The air is warm. Is it daytime or nighttime? It's daytime. Daytime. Mm -hmm. It feels western. Mm -hmm. Look down and see if you can see your feet. Feels like cowboy boots. Cowboy boots. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you feel male? Yes. Mm -hmm. How old do you feel there, approximately? Mm. Young or old? Young, like mid thirties. Mm -hmm. Mid thirties. So now that you've seen that you have boots, see what else you have on. What else are you wearing or carrying? Some bluish pants and like a holster or a hipster. Mm -hmm. and there's a pistol, a beigey button-down shirt and leather vest or waistcoat mm -hmm. and a kind of fabric tied around my neck, like a scarf or a bandana type. Mm -hmm. And I have a beige type cowboy hat, but it's not. It's kind of rounded. Mm -hmm. It's not oval. I think I have red hair, some freckles, mm -hmm. but I'm tan. Been in the sun a lot. And what do you imagine you're doing there in this place? I think I'm looking, I'm surveying, mm -hmm. watching, pr protecting. I think I have a badge. Mm -hmm. Take a look. It's a star, mm -hmm. star shape, mm -hmm. with a uh, rounded like balls on the on the, on the points of the star. Yes. Like marsh, marshal. A marshal. Marshal. Mm -hmm. And as a marshal, what do you think that you're protecting there? Town, town, town behind me. Mm -hmm. And it's not very big. It's a smaller town. Mm -hmm. Maybe a uh, transient people pass through. Mm -hmm. And do you feel that something is happening now, or that it's pretty quiet? It's pretty quiet. It's mm -hmm. peaceful. Peaceful. Very good. So I'd like you to now close that scene, close it in your mind, and let's go to the place where you live in this place. See yourself in front of your home. What does it look like? I see the, the, the prison. Mm-hmm. Like, it's, uh, it's not very big. Mm-hmm. There's no walls. It's, uh, Jail cells, bars in the back. Mm -hmm. um, a desk on the left and the front, mm -hmm. and a cabinet on the right side with guns mm -hmm. and some chairs and a smaller desk. Mm -hmm. Is this place where you work and sleep? I spent a lot of time here. Okay. A lot of time. Do you feel that you have a family? No. You're by yourself? Yes. Mm -hmm. So let's find out the story of why you're here. What goes on in this place? Prisoners pass through. Mm-hmm. And I make sure that their connections are not disturbed. Mm -hmm. They move on. I, I ensure that they don't escape. Okay. So and they're brought to you? They're brought, yes. Mm -hmm. 
and I watch over them until they are to move on. It's a, it's a far place out. Mm -hmm. It's a long journey to get to a major city. So it's like a holding place. Yes. For another connection. Yes. Mm -hmm. Are there any prisoners there now? No, it's empty. Mm -hmm. I feel like I see a woman, but she's not a prisoner. Let's find out who this woman is. Connect with her. Sarah. Mm-hmm. Who is Sarah? She's, uh... She's nothing significant, but... I hope that she might be. Mm-hmm. She's wearing, uh... She's, she's got to come for money, because she's really dressed fine. Mm-hmm. And pink and, and or purple. Big, beautiful hat. It's pink and, and purple, but it's tied down over her ears with a ribbon under her chin. Mm -hmm. And her pedi petticoats are pink and purple, and there's beige underneath with floral type prints. Mm -hmm. And she's got pointy, pointy shoes, but they're like... They have heels and they have buttons all the way up, mm -hmm. about quarter calf. And you can see these under her dress? Her dress is held up. Maybe she's holding it up to mm -hmm. walk. Mm -hmm. She's got dark hair and it's, and she's pale. She does, the sun doesn't really hit her. She protects herself from the sun. Mm-hmm. Are you inside or outside watching her? I'm inside by the door. Mm -hmm. She's walking. Does she look at you? She knows I'm there, but she's not really noticing me. And she walks past. Mm -hmm. What do they call you there? Michael. Michael is your name? Michael. Mm -hmm. If I say the name Michael, does it resonate with you? Michael Sampson. Michael Sampson. Mm -hmm. That's your whole name? Michael Arthur Sampson. Okay. And Michael, what year is this? 1748. 1748. Mm -hmm. No. Eight. What seventeen forty eight? Seventeen forty eight. Very good. Very good. So, Michael, let's go to another day in your life when something is happening, something important is happening. As an Indian. Mm hmm on a horse, painted horse, it's white with brown spots, and he's sitting tall, mm -hmm. and he's got a headband on with some feathers sticking out the back. He's higher up. He's not the chief. Mm -hmm. He's a warrior with great respect. He's got a paw or or handprint mm -hmm. on his chest. Mm -hmm. And he's got a bow and arrow over his body. And he's wearing hide pants mm -hmm. that are sewn together with leather cordage mm -hmm. on the sides. Where is this Indian? Outside the town. Mm -hmm. Are you watching him? I am. Mm -hmm. He's sitting on his horse. I'm standing next to mine. Mm -hmm. What do you get from him? There's no aggression. But a possibility, a p 
possible warning? Mm Mm-hmm. What is he warning you about? Something may come. Something Mm -hmm. may happen. Mm Mm-hmm. Something from the white man may happen. Mm -hmm. We're, We're not friends, but we have great mutual respect for each other. Almost like secret allies, Mm -hmm. we would... I've respected him and his tribe and his people. And they appreciate my distance and my humbleness. I'm very humble. Mm -hmm. And they see great strength in that. And they acknowledge that if there is a white man to be within their proximity, they are glad that it's a white man of my character and stature. Mm -hmm. They respect that in you. They do. Mm -hmm. And they've seen possibly other white men of high position Mm -hmm. that are not honorable or integral and they don't want me where I am. They want control. They want to take over. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he's warning me because they may be coming Mm -hmm. close. How does that make you feel as you're seeing this scene? Questions. Mm -hmm. Who? Why? What have I done? But it's not me. It's not personal. Yes. It's nothing against me personally. All right, Michael, let's move forward. Move forward in that scene to see what it is that happens. There's a man dressed in black. He's got a black hat on and it's round on the brim and domed with a black ribbon around it. Mm -hmm. And he's got deep blonde hair and a goatee Mm -hmm. and sideburns. And he's wearing a black suit and it's it's long, the coat is long, Mm -hmm. almost down to the, the backs of his knees. Yes. He's finely dressed, white collar, black cravat, Mm -hmm. and the whites of his sleeves are reaching out under his coat. Mm -hmm. His fingernails are clean. Who do you think this man is? He's high up. He's not a judge. Mm -hmm. What's he doing there? He, he got out of a stagecoach. He's from a, he's from the city. He mm-hmm. doesn't live out in the West. Mm-hmm. And he's approached me. Let's find out what he says. Connect with him. Trying to to bribe me. Mm-hmm. For what? Something gold, gold may pass. Gold mm-hmm. bars of gold. Mm-hmm. And it's. 
supposed to be held up or, or taken over or hi- hijacked mm-hmm. around the, the town or through the town. Yes. And I'm supposed to turn a blind eye to it and I will get a bar of gold and many other opportunities will come my way if I do this. How does that make you feel, Michael? My gut is tight and clenched. Mm -hmm. But I'm weary. Because he's putting on a nice facade Mm -hmm. of someone who's looking out for me but there's an undertone, an undercurrent of danger Mm -hmm. and anger and I feel that I have to make him feel like I am appeasing him but I want to be true to myself and my nature of doing what's right. Mm-hmm. But I'm aware, I'm aware that he sees I'm analyzing. He's guessing my thoughts. Mm-hmm. and is reconsidering if I could be a pawn in his game. And I am unsure of what to say. I want to be kept in the loop. I feel that I can pretend to play long and potentially stop or interfere with his plans of injustice. Mm -hmm. And I agree. I agree to to, to be part of his plan. Mm -hmm. And he leaves on more information will be shared t- t- to me when the time comes. Mm-hmm. And I am w- walking back to the jail. And I am unsure of what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. It seems, Michael, that you're a bit shaken about all this. I've put myself into a deep hole. Mm -hmm. I'm new. I'm new to this, to this, to this job, to protecting. Mm -hmm. But you know what's right and wrong. I do. But how, who can I turn to? I feel alone. Mm -hmm. You are the law there. I am the law and I have a gun, Mm -hmm. but I don't like violence. Yes. All lives are beautiful. All right, Michael, let's close this scene and let's go ahead to that important scene of when this happens. Be there now. What's going on? There's a coach and it's just tied up outside. No one is sitting on it. 
No one is. It's not a passenger coach. Mm -hmm. It's got a cargo, and it is gold bars. Mm -hmm. Why is it not being protected? They left because this plan is going down, mm -hmm. and I did not receive any instructions. He did not trust me to be part of the plan. Mm -hmm. Something is not right. The town is very quiet. Where is everybody? Nobody is around. They're all inside. Is that unusual? Yes. Mm -hmm. I take out my gun. I don't know what's happening. I feel scared. I don't know. I feel Anxious. Mm -hmm. I'm guarded. And I'm looking around. And a man walks out of a saloon with a tall rifle. He has. A, a box on his shoulder, but another man is behind and he's carrying it as well. It's a coffin. And they are walking. I think they're intending to put the gold in the coffin. Mm -hmm. And I'm not liking where this is going. Are there only two men or more? Only two came out from the bar. Mm -hmm. The one in front has a long mustache. He's wearing a black suit, similar long coat in mm -hmm. the back. Mm -hmm. He's got a leather holder, holster, with two shiny pistols. Silver and black grips. Mm -hmm. He's got spurs on the back of his boots, and they're black as well. They're walking towards the coach with the gold. But I don't think the coffin is meant the gold. I'm hiding. I think the coffin is meant for me. And I put it down next to the gold to taunt, tease, if I try to come close to stop them. They're intending for me to know that they will kill me and put me in the coffin. I'm not sure what to do. And I keep seeing the Sarah in the corner of my eye. I think her father is the man who had approached me. Mm -hmm. Do you feel betrayed? No, because we never officially connected. Mm -hmm. She was the only woman 
she was a woman from out of town, okay. different, mm -hmm. which is what drew my attention to her. Okay. So what happens next, Michael? I think I, I let them take the gold, but I'm regretting it. And I'm wanting to ride my horse. I'm on my horse. It's brown. Mm -hmm. Brown horse with brown hair. And I'm going after them. And I'm going after them alone. Mm -hmm. And they're going pretty fast. They didn't unload the gold, they just took the coach. Mm -hmm. And there's some not mountains, like structures, like a rock, very large mm -hmm. rock structures. And they are going around the right side. And I figure I can go around the left side and cut them off in did, front. Do they know that you're following them? I have a suspicion. that they might know that I'm following them and I'm racing on the horse to try and get around to the other side and I meet them there at the same time and the horse bucks up and I hear a gunshot he didn't fire at me up in the air, like a warning, mm -hmm. giving me a chance. And I'm unsure again of what to do. I'm being indecisive. And I'm not following my intuition. And I point my gun at him and I cock it. And I say to get down, now. And he does, with his hands up. But I know there's a second person. And I feel that a rifle is being pointed towards me and I am shot and I fall off my horse. I am hit in my shoulder, my left shoulder, and I'm on my back, on the ground, and I still have my gun in my hand, trying to point it, and I fire, and it misses, and he comes closer, and he steps on my hand, and the gun releases, and he spits on me. She says, you should have taken your chance, boy, while you had it. You done mess up real good. And he's grinding his heel into my hand, and I reach over and try and grab his ankle with my left arm, but it hurts, it's too painful. And I just slump back down. I want you to view this as a, as an observer, so you don't feel any discomfort. I don't feel pain. All right. But I know that he felt it. Mm -hmm. I'm saying... What do you want of me? I can't let you do this. It's too late now. You should have asked that question a long time ago. He pulls out a pistol and he points it at my head and he pulls or he, he cocks back a hammer and he pulls the trigger 
and it hits me in my forehead and I just see the sun and the blue sky and I feel the dryness on my lips As you transition out of that body now, Michael, leave that body behind. Feel that peace of allowing that body to release. And as you transition out, I want you to look at that life. Every life has a purpose. What was the purpose of that life? I led with my heart, but I didn't follow my intuition. Mm -hmm. I let my doubts get the better of me. And though the outcome could have still been the same, I would have embraced accepting my heart and intuition as my guides. Mm -hmm. So what lesson did you learn that you want to take to the next life? Stop. Don't question. Lead with that voice that you hear inside. Don't doubt it. Stop questioning it. It is your true guide, your true navigational compass through everything in this life and being. Mm -hmm. So Michael, I want you to leave that body there and drift to the place where you go in between lives and tell me who you find there. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I've, I've been here. Mm -hmm. It's a, uh, it's in space. Mm -hmm. In the universe. Describe it for me. It's uh, like, a, like a sky bridge. Mm -hmm. And it's like glass, light blue, transparent, but slightly opaque. Mm -hmm. And I'm walking on it. You're not walking. It's like I'm walking, but I don't feel anything solid under my feet. Mm -hmm. I'm... I'm... Uh, um, uh, light blue. I'm transparent. Mm -hmm. I have a body, but it's not... It's not solid. Mm -hmm. It's a light blue body. A light blue body. Mm -hmm. And there's a platform that is connected and some big arches and they're all the same, all this glass-like blue glass. Mm -hmm. So what's in this place? I go up some three steps. Mm -hmm. And I enter a dome with arches for doorways. Very high, high arches. Similar to the St. Louis arch. Mm -hmm. And I walk through. And though it's enclosed, you can see the universe for the roof. Mm -hmm. And there's a... There's... <laughs> There's like a another being mm -hmm. sitting at a desk, and he's he's wearing glasses, but it's like a joke. Mm -hmm. What kind of glasses? <laughs> like like um black framed mm -hmm. um nineteen fifties like military issue glasses, but mm -hmm. he doesn't need, he doesn't have eyeballs. He's and he's wearing a white coat almost like a, a medical student or doctor mm -hmm. but it's just 
It's a joke. He's a jokester. Mm-hmm. And who is this? He's a, he's a greeter. Mm-hmm. He's telling me to go. He just to the right, but he's not speaking. Mm-hmm. And I walk around and I enter a, a corridor and the universe is everywhere. And I walk around this corridor and I turn into an opening and there's like another desk mm -hmm. with three three there's three people at this desk? Three beings. Mm -hmm. What do these beings look like? Like me. Mm -hmm. Blue? Blue. But it's like we have blue energy swirling through us. Vapory energy. Like blue smoke. Moving and dancing underneath our transparent layer of, of, of being. Mm. And... There's no details on the face, but I can tell they're smiling at me. Mm -hmm. Does it have a body? They have bodies. Mm -hmm. Are they human type bodies? Human type, but longer. Mm -hmm. And their heads are a little... Like the, the back of their heads are a little bit longer and higher. Mm -hmm. But not... Not too much. Mm -hmm. Is there any hair? No hair. No... No... Definable features. Okay. Just light. Light. Mm -hmm. So who are these beings at this desk? I think... I think... I think one of them is a friend that I've met mm -hmm. in this... I, I feel like I've met him. <laughs> He's a marshal. Mm. You recognize him. And it's funny because I was a marshal in that lifetime. Mm -hmm. And we're like inwardly laughing <laughs> with each other. <laughs> and the, the two next to him, one on each side, they're... I think they're to debrief me. Mm -hmm. They're a team. They work together. Let's find out what this debriefing is all about. What happens? How do I feel my mission went? I feel that I learned what I was supposed to learn. Even though I learned it in my last breaths of physical being, I feel like I didn't, I feel like I don't carry any regrets with me. I lived a peaceful life. Though I lived with a lot of decisions not being made because I doubted myself, because I was thinking of the outcome too much, thinking about the the future possible outcome 
and trying to make a decision based on controlling, having a controlled outcome instead of following my intuition in that moment and I am okay. I did not carry any anger. I was a very peaceful being. And even though I did not always follow my intuition right off the bat, I felt very connected and true to my authentic self and they are very proud of me for the way that I went through that lifetime and what happens now? They're asking if I'm ready for another mission. And I say that I am, but if I could have some space to Consider this next mission very carefully because all my missions recently have been very peaceful and there is a big big set of experiences to come and before any contracts are signed Did you sign a contract for that life? I signed a contract with the woman. Mm hmm. What was that all about? She she was put there to try and sway me and sway my my honor, mm. integrity, to try and be a distraction. Mm -hmm. And I had to not, I had to be, I had to learn to Separate, mm -hmm. separate, separate my true feelings from outside emotions mm -hmm. and Do you feel you succeeded? I did. Mm -hmm. Did you make any other contracts? No. What about the men who killed you? Have you known them before? The one that shot me. Mm -hmm. he, he was. He had to shoot me. Pay his 
balancing the karma. Okay. So you balance some energy there. Yes. Mm-hmm. Very good. Mm. So what happens now after this review? Where do you go? You say you want some space. I am in a room. It feels like a room, mm -hmm. but it feels like a balcony. Mm -hmm. And I am gazing over the stars. Mm -hmm. And I see, I see stars that feel familiar to me. Are you from any of these stars? Somewhere by the constellation of Orion. Mm -hmm. This is your origin? This is where most of my time when I am not traveling is spent or time before mm -hmm. in preparation for the traveling why do you have a mission to earth i fallen volunteered you volunteered i volunteered because earth needs Help. Mm -hmm. When did this happen? When was the call sent out for Earth? You seem to have been there before. Yes, I've had many lifetimes on Earth. Mm -hmm. Only, only on Earth. Only on Earth. And those lifetimes. Are all preparing me for what? For the biggest mission that I have on Earth. Which is what? Which is to help illuminate the darkness that is descending on the planet. Mm hmm. And every lifetime that I've had, our experiences that I am to embrace, so that when I am in the lifetime where the darkness needs to be lifted the most, I will be able to recall upon those ingrained experiences or knowledge or wisdom, whatever it is to be called, mm -hmm. I can pull upon it and carry it with me Because it will be the not the not 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 the toughest, but the most pivotal lifetime mm -hmm. for me to be present in for for my mission. Mm -hmm. And what is going to be happening? On the earth at that time, you say darkness. Darkness. What kind, what kind of darkness? Negative vibration. Mm hmm. Who's causing this negative vibration? Frequencies being pulled back and forth. Mm hmm. It's like a war. A war between the light and the dark. Mm hmm. The dark is being manifested 
by beings who are incarnated on earth to try and ma maintain the the blindness and beings are coming to earth to try and not prevent, to shed light mm -hmm. and awaken human, human beings have choice, they have will and consciousness and I am to help enlighten or shine light on the fact that choices can be made. Love is in and around everything. Love is a strength and to help those who feel that they do not have love, who are not loved, help them see that love is infinite and it exists in everything and everyone and that is the divine frequency and with love everything can be transmuted into its highest potential that's very wise why is it that the humans don't know this because there is influence and it is felt that sometimes it is easier to not make a choice of your own, to be a part of a flock mm -hmm. and be led and to be a follower than to find your strength and take your power and make your choices from within and when and when some of the flock stray too far from the pack the fear of being alone and separate, different from others, catches up to them and they are enticed to be back thinking that they will be accepted only if they conform when in fact all they have to do is make the choice to accept themselves and they will be free and they will be light. Mm -hmm. When will you make this choice of who you will become in the next life? I have already made this choice mm -hmm. and <laughs> it's this next life is pivotal. Mm -hmm. Many, many people will have cataclysmic events 
that will lead them to their light, but in order for such a mass awakening, it has to be the lifetime of mass darkness. Mm -hmm. When you say cataclysms, are these cataclysms emotional or are they physical? They are a combination. Mm -hmm. They are cataclysms of a most powerful. They were, they encompass multiple dimensions of feeling and being and experiences. Mm -hmm. They have to have the deepest impact in order to break free mm -hmm. and have the brightest light. How do you choose the family in which you're going to be born? It is a family that resonated with me. Mm -hmm. Someone from the family I encountered in a previous lifetime. Mm -hmm. And and they did not learn their lesson and it is carried they are carrying forward with them a lesson to be learned mm -hmm. and because it is in a lifetime of such darkness the magnitude of that lesson feels much larger and will have an impact on many where I will have an impact on many in return. Mm -hmm. So you've come into this lifetime with contracts already with others in your family. Family, yes. Mm -hmm. What family have you chosen for this next lifetime? Who will it be? It is the lifetime that she is living in now. Mm -hmm. So do you consider yourself to be her higher self? Yes. Okay. Would you allow me to ask you some questions that she brought today? Yes. Mm -hmm. She feels that her purpose in life is to help spread a lot of light, awaken, spread love. She wants to know if she's on the right path. She is now. Mm -hmm. The path she has always been leading it, but the path that she thought was the wrong path was actually the right path and she needed to experience those moments and live through those experiences in order for her to be able to fully embrace the journey that still lays in front of her. Mm -hmm. What should she be doing towards this purpose, this mission? She is to continue to heal mm -hmm. the scars that she accumulated early in that lifetime mm -hmm. and continue to embrace embrace the uh, embrace the guidance that she is receiving Mm -hmm. Yet she doubts. What would you like to tell her about that doubting? It's gotten you in trouble before. Yes, it has. And you are aware of this. But you are doing a very good job shedding light on the fact that you still carry doubts with you. And by bringing your doubts into your awareness, you will start and 
have been dissolving the doubts. <laughs> Her <laughs> doubts are lesser mm -hmm. than they were, and she is learning to accept the guidance that she carries within. Oh, wonderful. What are the superpowers that she has in this lifetime? She is empathic, mm -hmm. as they call it, mm -hmm. and she has abilities to travel and connect with people, but she has much, much more healing to do before she can fully be able to embrace and experience these powers. Mm -hmm. Well, she was questioning what different modalities she needs to be learning. <laughs> she feels like she's going into all different directions. <laughs> Should she do massage? Should she be shaman? energy work, coaching, <laughs> hypnosis. This is amusing <laughs> <laughs> because she knows the answers to mm. this, but she doubts herself, which is why she keeps asking the question. Every modality that intrigues her and calls to her, she will excel at. Mm -hmm. The modality she is to focus on is the modality that aligns with her in the present moment she is in. <laughs> she knows this, mm -hmm. but the doubt and small level of fear, she still fears about financial security mm -hmm. because she has a son yes but her son he chose this life to come to her to help to reassure her that all will be okay because he is there to help support and guide her and that the financial abundance that she worries about need not be a concern when it comes to his safety or security. He's told her that he was his, she, her guardian angel. He is her guardian angel. And he chose this lifetime to mm -hmm. be born to her mm -hmm. because this is a pivotal lifetime and her mission must be carried out. And he chose to be born to her to support her on this mission and to reassure her when times may come that look dark or glum that all will be okay as long as she focuses on the current moment the present moment and she need know that she not be overly concerned over his safety mm -hmm. okay good getting back to these modalities she came to this session today out of curiosity whether she should do qhht hypnosis yes <laughs> she will and the qhht will be the first and primary modality that she will truly practice in and make her own. Mm -hmm. The other modalities will be vitally as important in her mission to helping with healing of others and with herself as every time she works with others she accesses new and divine units of wisdom within herself mm. that she is not fully aware of in the present moment. Well, she told me that she wants to travel to different countries. She's drawn to help people from all over the world. How yes. can she reach these people? 
she will be mobile she has a feeling of being nomadic in her and mm -hmm. she needs to embrace she worries that because she has a son she will not be able to move around and those worries stem from judgment and feedback mm -hmm. from other beings she needs to accept fully that when she no longer judges herself there will be no judgment to be received in return from others you manifest your judgment when you start judging you open the door to receiving judgment mm. she needs to eliminate this self-judgment that she carries for herself and she needs to embrace the pull and the call that she feels for the countries and the places that she is pulled to she will be making meaningful contacts that will help her on this mission and her son will be joining her in due course mm -hmm. he also chose this lifetime for another purpose mm -hmm. who else is guiding her you say that her son is her guardian angel but who are her other guides she has michael mm -hmm. and raphael and gabriel so no doubt that's why they brought her here She has <laughs> she has met Michael in another lifetime mm -hmm. <laughs> and she has interacted with him in her sacred space. Mm -hmm. So they guide her. How can she connect with them even more? She wants to have more connection with with them besides the plant medicine mm. she needs to clear her mind she manifests a lot of these thoughts that enter them mm -hmm. she needs to stop looking forward so much and listen because we are always communicating with her and she doubts the communications she second guesses them she does not always accept them feeling that they are of her own manifestation because she's constantly manifesting other thoughts mm. she needs to learn how to meditate and the vipassana that she had signed up for will be a doorway to help her be able to segregate all the thoughts that she's manifesting mm -hmm. versus the guidance that's being provided okay we had talked about her meditation. She's signed up for a retreat in New Zealand, a class there. And she's concerned that she needs to practice to meditate in order to get mm -hmm. there. No. Well, tell her about that. She needs to focus now on her physical being. It has gone through much damage. Mm -hmm. And the reason why she is feeling as you say blockages or resistance mm -hmm. in this physical lifetime yes. is because she has much healing to do still mm. and much learning to do with respect to self love mm. and acceptance when she 
goes to the Vipassana, she will be ready at that time as long as she continues to follow her intuition and guidance. Mm -hmm. How can she follow her intuition and guidance about her, her body? She seems to be putting on a lot of weight. She puts on the weight because she was unhappy. Mm. And when she found her pockets and moments of happiness, mm -hmm. when she released all the thoughts of future and thoughts of past and found true happiness, she released protection. Uh. And when she did not embrace her happiness and love from within, the protection started to return. Mm -hmm. Is that what happens with a lot of people who gain weight? Yes. It's a padding that they it's put It's a them? padding and a source of external validation in the means of the way that the weight is gained for some people. Hmm. And for many others, it is a source of protection that they hide behind. Mm -hmm. They remove themselves from environments because of the judgment of the way that they look from mm -hmm. the walls that they have put up. Mm -hmm. So the key to losing weight and being at the optimal, I guess, weight or uh, look for your body is really to focus on your happiness? To focus on your happiness mm -hmm. and to connect in nature and to ground yourself. Grounding mm -hmm. is of the utmost importance and to nourish your physical container appropriately. What would she be eating? She should be consuming more water. Mm -hmm. She has struggled with this since her return from her journeys. She should be eating more fresh vegetables, mm -hmm. plant life, and for now, she can be eating from the sea mm -hmm. and at times eggs mm -hmm. when her when her body tells her that it is needed. Mm -hmm. She is going through a shift a physical shift where at some point she will not need to rely on the proteins from animals mm -hmm. but it is a transitionary process okay very good and you talked about grounding can you tell me how you can ground yourself there are many ways of grounding Many work better for others. Mm -hmm. We are all unique beings with respect to deeper grounding. It is vital for her to connect in nature mm -hmm. more and to start utilizing the practice of white light she has to start creating a daily routine of encompassing and washing herself in a white light and connecting that white light to mother Gaia mm -hmm. and planting and digging those roots within mother Gaia for the information that she is downloaded with needs to be 
filtered through her, passed through her, and forwarded down to Gaia. Mm. She is holding this information inside, and because of that, she is not able to fully comprehend or integrate the information that is being provided. Hmm. Well, you just surprised me because we do an exercise, I do an exercise with all of my clients that seems to say exactly what you just said, that we're, that I ground them to Gaia. Is this something that she should be remembering? Yes. Mm -hmm. So we connect them with Source and we can, so that she can get the download, the white light, and then connect her with Gaia. Yes, she has asked mm -hmm. previously, and she has demanded and been <laughs> quite vocal about mm -hmm. being ready. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she is, was not fully ready, but we gave her a small taste of what it was like to receive downloads. Mm -hmm. And now she is aware that she is receiving downloads, but not able to fully comprehend or understand the true essence behind this. And with the practice of grounding to Mother Gaia, while she is in her being, she will start to unravel and unfold the information and have it integrated into her being. Wonderful. That validates a lot for me too. Apparently, somebody downloaded that information to me, too. <laughs> many, many, many are receiving these downloads. <laughs> I never knew. <laughs> Can we talk about her relationships? I know that you had talked about her making contracts with people before she came into this lifetime. What was her contract with her sister? Her contract mm -hmm. with passed. her sister. She passed away so yes, early. Was to learn strength and support mm -hmm. and stability, but to learn as well that she needs to honor herself first mm. and put herself first. She needs to have strength and stability for herself primarily for if she does not she will crumble and she will not be able to help guide others into the light mm -hmm. she has to learn that she needs to take care of her emotional physical spiritual vessel in order to be able to help others mm -hmm. Does Stephanie have any messages for her today? She is with peace mm -hmm. and happiness. And though she may have doubted the type of sisterhood and relationship that she may have had with her, that she was a sister that she enjoyed her physical time with in this physical lifetime and that she is very proud of the work that she is doing and that she is always here to help very good. So she can call on her if she needs her help. Now she is ready. Now she will be able to call on her. Mm -hmm. Where was she that she couldn't help before? She was doing healing mm -hmm. of her own. But the healing had finished and she was waiting for the right time. And she will meet with her again in what human terms would be considered soon. Mm -hmm. 
but no, it's not the right moment. Okay, very good. It seems that everyone is looking for their their soulmate, their twin soul. Will she meet hers in this life? There is a high possibility mm -hmm. that she will. However, she is not to be distracted by this and needs to focus on her mission. And if she continues to focus on her mission, her connection will be made. Hmm. Will it be someone like her that's on the same mission? Yes. Okay. I've encountered quite a few people recently that have been awakening, and they seem to be almost separating themselves from partners. They're kind of going on their own, not wanting to face the drama of being in a relationship. Is this something that's happening with light workers? Many are awakening to the fact that they have formed codependent attachments to others and they cannot truly and often authentically step into their divine beings while they have formed attachments and these attachments are not what would be considered healthy for the vibration we need to ensure that vibrations are being raised and when one is attached to another being who is on a different vibrational frequency they at times may lower or heighten their vibration because of this mm -hmm. however due to the age of the darkness there is much 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 lower vibrations across and those who are awakening are starting to detach themselves and realizing that each of us beings have to raise our own vibrations individually we cannot attach ourselves and maintain attachments for your vibration cannot rise when mm. this occurs and other vibrations need to rise in order to help shift how can we shift the planet we must each embrace our divine authenticity we need to focus on following our path the more we lead in our own love and light, the more the wake of love and light expands around us. Mm -hmm. We are like a drop in the bucket, but the ripple will continue to grow. Mm -hmm. And by leading by example, other beings will see and not judge. They will understand that the divine being that you are is the divine being that they are seeing. When you lead by example, you are not living in a act. You are not living behind or under a facade. When you are living in this human lifetime genuinely, others will see that and aspire to be genuine. Wonderful. And this is something that Jackie wants to do, I'm sure. Many, many mm -hmm. want to do this. Mm -hmm. Many are afraid. Mm. And as they see, so when they see someone doing something genuinely loving and lifting the vibrations, does that allow their vibration to be raised also? They experience momentary raises in their rises in their vibrations. However, unless they do the work on themselves, mm. they will not be able to maintain the level of vibration they had experienced. Uh. They will feel the vibration 
and they will feel the love and the warmth and the goodness and the light. However, it is each of each individual's own mission and journey to unfold and uncover the layers of negative and lower vibrations that they have acquired. And until they do this, they will not be able to maintain or raise a higher vibration. Mm. Well, that's that's quite a job for uh, all these volunteers to, to do. It is quite a job, but they are all more than capable. Mm. How many are these volunteers? Around? There are many, 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 mm-hmm. many, and more are coming. Okay, are these the new children? There are many names mm-hmm. for the volunteers that come, and there will be many beings who will come who are awaiting for us to continue to spread the light and love so that they can move and make a forward shift. Is there any possibility of beings from other star systems or other planets to visit the Earth to help raise the vibration? Is that a plan in place? Or are we not ready for that yet? There... (laughs) There are many possibilities that may arise. Mm -hmm. But who are we to question the future and what may or may not come? Mm -hmm. So we're creating this from moment to moment? Yes. Mm -hmm. So there's no plan B, there's C, D, E, and F, and G. There's many different plans. There are many many plans. Mm -hmm. We just have to wait until we get to the moment, right, I guess? Some or many may not be ready to be aware, Mm -hmm. or they will focus their attentions in other directions when they should be focusing their intentions here and now. Dolores Cannon had talked about the New Earth about people shifting to another dimension. Do you know anything about this? There will be a shift. Mm -hmm. And it will be in a time where the frequency has risen to a certain point. Mm -hmm. The frequency on Earth and the frequency of human beings is already rising and the shift will occur and it may will not be in too long of a wait, however, Humans are always looking to put a time stamp on Mm -hmm. these events and moments and experiences. The time will come when the time is right. A lot of people seem to be desperate to go on to this new earth. That feeling of desperation and focusing on this desperation will only hold things back mm-hmm. more. So what would you suggest to people who are saying, we want this to happen now, we're tired of this earth the way it is? You are here on this earth for a divine mission, for a divine purpose. Stop looking towards the finish line. There is much beauty and learning and many experiences to be had on this journey. Stop and smell the roses. That is an experience in its own. Mm -hmm. If you do not have 
the experiences you are intended to have, you will not be able to prepare for the next journey. Mm, very good. So those that are planning on checking out on their own? No, that will only delay your purpose further. Okay. You are feeling many negatively associated emotions and feelings, but they are experiences and feelings to be had. Do not try to push away these feelings or emotions. They are to be felt. Negative and positive are only labels. When you take away the labels, when you take away the names that have been given to things, then there is no bad or no good. Everything is an experience mm -hmm. to be had. The labels that have been applied to things in society have only held mankind back further. Very <laughs> good. <laughs> now talking about these experiences, she's questioning her experiences from her youth. She doesn't seem to remember much of her childhood. Why is that? She wants to know if she had any bad experiences. She has had many experiences in her childhood. Many more experiences than what many people would consider normal mm -hmm. in a human lifetime. She cannot remember many of these experiences because her energy needs to be focused elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Her experiences in the past, her choices in the past do not define her. She has the ability and the will to make a choice in the present moment now to lead her so basically you're saying don't focus on the past it's not important that is correct mm -hmm. focus only on what's happening now and what's ahead of you that is correct okay she says that um, she's very sleepy all the time what's going on with her body there are two reasons behind this. One reason is she is receiving a lot of information and she is slowly incurring adjustments. Mm -hmm. And she is also being very stationary in her day to day in what she had called work mm. and when the body is not in movement it affects the other levels of being as well once she starts becoming more active in the activities that she is desiring her level of energy will increase but it is also very important that she continues to work on her grounding. Mm, okay, good. Good. Could you do a body scan on her and tell me if you find anything in her body that we need to work on health-wise? pains in her right elbow, mm -hmm. but that is not of a concern 
as that was triggered by her consistency of being right-handed and using the computer mm. and it will start to dissipate with the movement that she will be making and with the shifts that she is intending to make in her food diet. Okay. Would you put some energy into that elbow to facilitate that healing? Yes. Thank you. And what else did you find? She has a irritation in what is called the sciatic. Mm -hmm. And that is resulting from poor movement in a position from a yoga lesson that she had. Mm -hmm. And this can be alleviated by incurring a physiotherapy and by ensuring that when practicing yoga or other forms of movement, the body is correctly aligned. Mm -hmm. Would a chiropractor help with that? Adjusting her? It is more myofascial mm -hmm. and a chiropractor may help, but the better form of healing would be through movements and myofascial massage. Okay, good. Did you see anything else in her body? She has an inflammation behind her right eye. Mm-hmm. What's causing that? This is caused because her body is shifting and she no longer needs to consume the larger amounts of sugars or carbohydrates mm -hmm. that she has been consuming and once her food diet shifts and the level of carbohydrates are reduced, the inflammation will dissipate. Very good. She had told me she had fibroids. Can you check and see if how that, that's going along? There are no fibroids. No fibroids. What was causing those? There were factors that combined to cause them. Mm -hmm. The primary factor was that she was blocked in her sacral. Mm -hmm. And there were some there was a history of food choices that did not benefit as well. Okay. However, she has done much work on clearing the blockage in the chakra and it is no longer there. Wonderful. Are all her chakras performing as they should? The heart chakra mm -hmm. is blocked. Why is that? She has had recent interactions with her partner, mm -hmm. the partner, the father mm -hmm. of her child, and though she is working on unconditional love and no judgment, she blocked her chakra out of protection. Does she need that protection now? No, she does not. Can we clear that for her? Yes, we can. Thank you. Let me know when you're done. So 
thank you. What about her other chakras? Are they okay? They are all aligned. What about her aura? How do you see that? Any leaks? There are a couple of minor leaks in her aura. Mm -hmm. and she should be performing mm -hmm. cleanses of her aura. How do you cleanse your aura? She needs to visualize the cleansing of her aura and accessing of the light through her eighth chakra to assist with this. Mm -hmm. Where is the eighth chakra located? It is located above her head. Mm -hmm. She knows where this chakra is and she has had success with working with this chakra before. So bring in the white light through there? Yes. Okay, very good. Can you see anything else in her body that's influencing her? That needs to be taken care of today? She's worked with plant medicine before. Has she been protected while she works with it? She has been protected with her plant medicines mm. because she has been very careful to set her intentions specifically with the medicine. She acts as an observer in the medicine ceremony and she does not invite in any outside beings. Very good. What happens if you don't protect yourself during these ceremonies? You open yourself to the possibility of an entity or being attaching your, itself to a vulnerability mm. or a weakness within your self. Mm -hmm. We have the power to say no. Okay. Is anybody that she knows affected by these beings? Yes. How can she help? There are a couple options that she can follow or use mm -hmm. to help. However, unless the being or person is willing to help themselves and to be helped, she will not be able to help guide them. Mm -hmm. The free will? Yes. Okay. Very good. Is there anything that I didn't ask that I should have asked today that you would like to tell her? You have asked wonderful questions and filling in the gaps mm -hmm. where she did not think to ask. <laughs> and she, she's doing a very wonderful job. And to continue to embrace all that is being provided to her. The opportunities are all in front. Do not question them as you may and open your arms and continue to walk in your path of light with love in your heart and trust. As she likes to say, this is not a belief, this is her reality. And as long as she keeps walking in her reality, her mission will be fulfilled with love and light in her heart and being. Very good. Is there a message that you would like to give to anybody else, to the world? This is a time where there can be much doubt resonating from within. However, we are our own divine navigational compasses. We know what 
and where we need to go. We know everything and all is already divinely within us. Think for yourself. Think with your being. We were not intended to be cookie cutter. We were not intended to be the same. We are all divinely unique beings. We all divinely hold unique skills and opportunities for us to experience. We are all one and we are all connected and we all see ourselves in each other. Lead your life with love and compassion and forgiveness. There is many, many more things that can be said. However, these are things that you already know deep down divinely within yourself. Listen to your heart. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for a mind-blowing session. Thank you for the opportunity. Nine, ten, wide awake. Wide awake. Mm. Feeling <laughs> wonderful all over. Wow. 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 <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Tell me what it was like on your side. It was mind blowing on mine. Wow, that was incredible. Tell me. It was like the words were coming out, but. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> Oh man. How is that past life? That was so intense. That wow. You were you were like detailed. Even. I felt so peaceful. Did you? I felt so incredibly peaceful and the connection that you had with the Indian. Oh man. I mean it was the Indian. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He was warning you that there was something going on. And then being shot. That was it was interesting because I was I was there, right? Mm -hmm. I was there. I was seeing, I guess you would call it the perpetrator. And, yeah. but there was no fear coursing through me. Mm. Just doubt. As there to was, what you were do. there was doubt. Wow. I actually resonated with that <laughs> really deeply. <laughs> that, yeah. Like I've been there. Wow. I've done that. Yeah. Know what that feels like. Yeah. But even until the last breath, it was. <sighs> Did I do something wrong? Was it, did I make the right choice? Yeah, yeah. And then your travel? That was amazing. What did it look like? Oh, man, that was incredible. When you said the universe, you... I just the, saw, like... The stars. The stars, like the cosmos, like everything. And this, um, this like, glass, like a glass walkway that was, mm -hmm. like, you could, like, almost see through it. Yeah. And... It was like a bridge, like it was bridging from somewhere else that I didn't even look to see. Mm -hmm. And it was floating. There was like nothing holding it up. And it went off into like this massive platform. And mm -hmm. it's like a, a dome like structure that had like these high arches. Mm -hmm. Like, and you would go into it. And the guy, the dude with the glasses. <laughs> the glasses. <laughs> oh man, that was amazing. Oh, what an experience. That was incredible. And your higher self was just... It felt like it was just waiting to come out. Yeah. Like, it felt like it's been trying to, like, communicate with me, and I just haven't been accepting it. Like, I've been doubting. It feels like I had, I've communicated with it before, mm -hmm. and I would second guess or doubt what it was well i eased in very slowly to see if we were actually talking about this life that mm -hmm. that uh that this being was describing oh. do you feel he was male or female what did you feel the, the being yeah your higher self it kind of had a bit of a masculine mm -hmm. undertone to it mm -hmm. But it felt like there was no... No gender. No gender. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no gender. I mean, there were... 
there were some kind of undertones, but I don't think it, mm-hmm, it was enough to define, or yeah, it wasn't. Right. But it had yeah. a lot of information for you, and a lot of guidance, oh my god. I mean, we went through all your questions, but even then... I can't, I can't remember, like, a I lot. I can't remember that part. No. <laughs> like, I remember... Do you think you, re- you stopped remembering after we started asking? I remember... Okay. It's gonna so start there were away. yeah there were questions about the the mission the next mm-hmm. mission mm-hmm. that was coming up and then you kind of and then it just kind of you, tapered from there because yeah. because I mean your higher self was really deep into mm. into you into you so yeah. it was coming out I I felt like my body was shaking it was like, sometimes it, yeah it did, it did tremble a few and times. I felt like. Um, a lot of vibration. Like, pu- yeah, and like big pulses, like into the selenite. Yeah, that's <laughs> selenite. Good stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really changed all of my sessions. Wow, I, I can't believe how much people connect now. Wow, it's yeah, it's incredible. Amazing. So we we talked a lot about everything in general. Mm-hmm. Is this something that you want to share? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, this is, yeah. <laughs> for me, was mind-blowing. Yeah, wow. Well, mind-blowing. That was... Whew. There was something... Wait, what is it? Something... I mean, that's mean, something that... message to the world and everything. There was something that... um. Oh, come on. Come to me. Come to me. <laughs> something that I say a lot. Oh! So, it's funny because... um. As I would talk to people back home, like I would meet up with people, you know, I was gone for a long time and a lot of people had been seeing like the tone of my posts and things have been changing and mm-hmm. they're like, I want to meet up with you. I want to chat with you. And, you know, a lot of people that I would speak with, you know, they would just open up and start sharing. You know, I ended up just creating a space for them. Mm-hmm. And then when I felt compelled to share, I would show, share as well. And I would be aware that a lot of what I'm sharing with how I'm feeling and how I'm walking through life mm-hmm. is very different than what they're accustomed to. Mm-hmm. So in the beginning, I would say, you know, it's my belief. But then I realized, I was like, wait, no, it's it's not a belief, right? It's mm-hmm. This is my reality. reality. You know, and, what blew me away, me personally, mm-hmm. is that I do a meditation at mm-hmm. the beginning of this before we even start mm-hmm. the induction. Mm-hmm. And this meditation came to me one day. I just created it, you know? It's like this is the meditation where we start mm-hmm. with the capsule and, you know, the light. Oh, okay, yeah. And uh, it, it, it evolved mm-hmm. because it first started out as one thing and then evolved into something else. Mm-hmm. And then your higher self described almost to a T, <laughs> what, what I do. And to me, it was like, oh, that's, oh, wow. that's where it came from. They've been downloading this meditation to me oh. because it feels to me like this is what, how I need to start these yeah. sessions. Yeah. And, you know, no one else seems to, well, I don't know what other people mm-hmm. do, but this is what I do. And it feels like it's the right thing. Oh, you wow. Know, connect. Yes. And that's what your higher self said. I don't know if you remember this part at all. It's, uh, it's, but it's like, wow. It it almost validated what I'm doing. That's amazing. I always get something out of these things. I'm, I'm going to listen to this like a million times. (laughs) But you need to. (laughs) Because it's funny. It's just like, it's all, it's like a kind of like a dream. Like it's all just kind of. Yeah. How did you feel like if you were to describe what hypnosis feels like? Mm. What does it feel how like it to feel? you? How, would, how does it feel like being inside this trance? Because I, you went really deep. I felt like I was almost like in a deep meditative state. Mm-hmm. And so I could remember um, when I was going through the past life mm-hmm. where I was um, Michael. a Westerner, like in the Western world. Mm-hmm. And I, I would feel feel like certain things like like when the doubt came Mm -hmm. and it was almost like that emotion like I was actually physically there like Mm -hmm. but I was still aware that I was here Mm -hmm. and because of that I guess there wasn't a panic 
mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Because even though, like, like what you said, like, like being in a movie, you get so captivated by it, mm-hmm. but at the same time, you know that you're somewhere that's safe right. and. Mm-hmm. So your monkey mind stopped chattering. It, came, it tried to come up, and I did that thing. I'm like, no, go back later. <laughs> there were, there were maybe in the middle, in the beginning only. Yeah, what happened? What was she yeah. saying to you? She was saying, um, oh, this isn't real. And I'm like, no, just go back to where you are. Go back, go back. We'll deal with you later. And then there was another time where, um, where was it? By the stagecoach, uh-huh. where the stagecoach was there, but no one was in the town. And it's like, when it come up and it started to come up and crawl up and was saying something like, um, are you just imagining this? Mm-hmm. And I was like, I was like, would you please go back? <laughs> would you please go back? I'm in the middle of something here. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I felt it literally it felt like it went to like the corner of like yeah. the left side of my brain. <laughs> Well, they like to creep up, you know. Yeah, it just came you, out of nowhere. And tell you, oh, you were imagining the whole yeah. thing. Because most people who go into hypnosis and they talk to me, they'll say, that was a waste of my time. I was making it all up. Mm, it felt it felt pretty, felt pretty real. But I knew that I was here yes. and I wasn't there. And I would have to look for something. Mm. But it was interesting how, like... um so in the beginning, I remember the beginning, I was looking out like over like New Mexico or mm-hmm. somewhere and yes. I had to co- like consciously like move, mm-hmm. not, I wasn't, I don't mm-hmm. think I was moving my physical head, but I had to like almost consciously like move and look around. Mm-hmm. But then there were parts where things were just happening and like, um, when the the coach was there and i just kind of like backed away next thing i know the scene had changed and they were already going off and i was like on this horse like going after them Mm -hmm. and there was no forcing it there was no looking for it it just kind of like played out like yeah it just happened that was awesome It was. That was awesome. Uh, you were so detailed. I mean, you were even detailed to the buttons on her shoes. I just remembered the buttons when you were getting ready to say that. No, we're still connected. Yeah. <laughs> we haven't cut the umbilical yeah. cord yet from our hearts. They were cool buttons. They were um they weren't like buttons with four holes in them. They were kind they looked like mushroom caps almost like mm. this and they were they were sewn on by the end. Mm. And it's like little like loops were like hooked over yes. them yeah because they used little hooks to to, do to, the button. to button now when i said the when i asked you about the the date you got a little mixed up there yeah was like, 1748 or, 14, or 1748 was the first thing that come up but then you questioned it i questioned it mm-hmm. and then i kind of felt like saying 18 but then it went right back and it was yeah. like 1748 it's interesting. I don't even know what happened in 1748. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> so let's, how, how long do you think you were in this little journey? Oh, I don't know. Like 45 minutes? <laughs> no. <laughs> An hour? More? Uh, hour 15? No. <laughs> we're on two hours right now. No. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. Pretty wild, huh? Wow. So let's disconnect you and... <laughs> That's all I can say. <laughs> oh, what a session. Amazing. Mind-blowing. <laughs> wow. I never would have expected this. I didn't expect it either. What did you expect? I actually, I kept telling myself no expectations, but I had a lot of doubts. Yeah. Doubts, that seems to be the theme tonight. Yeah. 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 And, and the, the funny thing is that you slipped into this session. I did. Like. I just happened to be in Miami and. So, so tell our viewers where you're from and where you're going. <laughs> <laughs> I am from the Cayman Islands, and, well, I am from the Cayman Islands, but it is as of Friday, as of Saturday, 7.30 a.m., no longer home. <laughs> I have decided to 
disconnect from the matrix, as you call it, and actually start following my intuition and my heart. And I am pursuing the path of love and light and healing and pursuing energy work and mm -hmm. QHHT and many other beautiful modalities that, <laughs> that are aligning with yeah. me. So yeah. where are you going to next? Um, next, I'm going to North Carolina to visit my son and spend time with him. And then I am off, if it continues on the line path, to um, Australia, New Zealand, and Bali. So. <laughs> <laughs> and then who knows? Right? And who knows? The, and and the, the funny thing is that I had no sessions available. Mm -hmm. And you called me and you said... Like, look, I'm traveling through on my way. You you come up, you keep crossing my path. Yeah. And, and you were like, can you be here on this date at this time? And I just happened to be like, yes. <laughs> and I am so glad I followed oh my, my intuition. <laughs> <I'm so glad. laughs> it was like, I'm watching this session. Just, yeah. my mouth is just hanging open It was the time. incredible how I looked at so many other practitioners to go to. And none of them resonated. Well, and you did, <laughs> <laughs> and you know we're 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 pretty much on the same path. We really, we are. You know? And I, I think there are many people who are mm -hmm. on this path as well. Yes, and they they just need to step into it. Mm -hmm. and, and when I was listening to your higher self, I was thinking, everybody out there, this is for them. <laughs> this is not for you. This is for everybody out there because mm -hmm. they were really talking about everybody else about waking up yeah. and following your intuition and because we're all one we are all one and this is very new to me this is very, very new <laughs> to me like i'm just a few months into this oh and my god like it just blows my mind mm -hmm. like the infinite possibilities yeah it's infinite it's it's really whatever the mind can conceive really yeah. that's really and beyond. and beyond and beyond and beyond so we're just like at the just scraping, scraping yep. the, 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 the surface. Yeah. yeah. So do you recommend this to others? <laughs> absolutely. I absolutely mm -hmm. recommend this to others, but the intention has to be there. It has to be there. You can't just come out of curiosity. I no. think you have to really set an intention before you started. Mm -hmm. You set a really strong intention. Oh yeah. Tell everybody how you set this. Intention. I, um, so I had this glass of beautifully infused, um, Crystal essence water. Yeah, with from Alba with shungite and amethyst <laughs> and amethyst and, and amethyst. a bunch of other stones yeah. that are in my filter water. And as I was holding this glass, I held it over my heart chakra, over my heart space, and I opened love to it. And as I opened love to it, every word that I said with my intention, I felt it to my core. It's like the words came out from inside, and they poured into this beautiful elixir. And as I drank it, I was conscious and aware of every sip, every gulp, every drop that was going down. And mm -hmm. it just infused me. Water is powerful. Water is powerful and we need to drink a lot more of it. Yes, we and told. we need to drink clean water. Mm -hmm. Clean water. Coming from Cayman, fluoride is not added to our water. Mm -hmm. And coming here and drinking water from the refrigerator, mm -hmm. I was like, whoa, this does not taste like water. No, no. And that's why I have the, the my own filter and I put all the stones in mm. there. And as soon as you put the stones, it just totally it just, changes. It charges and it charges it and the water and is so soft. It is incredibly soft. I mean, you just I, love, just, I drank you almost just the whole the thing. <laughs> thing. <laughs> the whole thing, it's like so soft going it down. It goes down so easily. Isn't it nice? It's like the elixir of life. It is, yeah. it is. So if you want a session with me here in Miami, <laughs> albawyman.com, and uh, same as Jackie did, just sign up, and we'll be seeing each other soon. Okay. See you soon. <laughs> Give me a big hug. It was a great Thank session. You. Thank oh. you. Excellent. Oh, thank you Excellent. so much.